Okay. Right now we're in uh, sunny Florida. <laughs> it's about what, what's Poolside. today? What's today? May 30th. May 30th, 2004. 2004. I'm interviewing my grandfather. What's your name? My name is Floyd Shakir Kate. <laughs> the son of Badia and Angel Kate. So, what were your earliest memories, Grandpa? Well, I was born in Brooklyn, New York, in the uh, Shore Road Hospital, and I lived all my childhood on 79th Street, 171 79th Street in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn. And I had a wonderful childhood there. We were, we were three boys and one girl, my two brothers, Joseph and Butch, and my sister, Gloria. We lived in this house. Um, my brother Butch and I shared a room, and uh, we got along very well, except he was a pest sometimes. He used to get me in trouble with my father. We would be laying there, I'd be minding my own business, and he'd start to scream, Daddy, Floyd is hitting me, he's hitting me. My father would come up and give me a beating, and then he would leave, and then I would proceed to give my brother a beating to get even with him. But we got over all that. What was your room like? <laughs> it was a very small room. We had two twin beds, two twin beds and a dresser, and that's where we lived, in that room. Uh, what were your parents like? My parents were very good parents. My father was a hard-working salesman who used to travel for his linen business. And he used to be away during the week and come back on the weekend. Where'd he go? Huh? Where'd he go? Well, he used to go to different cities in the... In the uh, not too far away, uh, within, you know, driving distance of New York, of Brooklyn. He used to go upstate New York and to Jersey and Pennsylvania to the linen shops and sell his wares. What were your uncles like? Um, I had a load of uncles. My father had, I think, six brothers and one sister. And um, during the war years, when uh, the Ozzy and, and Philip were away in the service. Their wife used to live in Bay Ridge with, with their mother-in-law, my grandmother. They used to live on 86th Street. And every Sunday, my father used to take me to visit them. And I used to have to go visit them every Sunday morning. And um, when my uncles came back from the service, they. Uh, they started a, in, a, in a quilting business. There were three, three uncles, Behees, um, Philip and Amo, and uh, Niazi used to work for them. And they started a quilting business. And they did very well. As, as I got older, and my father's linen business failed, we also went into the quilting business. My father and I, and uh, my uncle Niazi worked with us in the beginning. Things didn't work out with him. He went into business on his own with his brother-in-law. And my father and I continued to run the business. And uh, we ran it uh, successfully. And then my brother, Butch, joined us. And we ran it successfully for 30 years, 35 years. But then. Uh, Quilting started to fade out, and go overseas and other places, and we closed the business. But getting back to my years growing up, uh, I had a very happy childhood. I was, I was always athletically inclined, and uh, I was blessed to be a good athlete at the time. And I uh, always played ball. Every day after school, I was always at the ball field playing ball. Uh, when I went to high school, I was the, the captain of the baseball team. And uh, I was offered a, a football and baseball scholarship to Georgetown University. 
but could not accept it at the time because my father needed needed me in the business. I, o- I always that. regretted it that I ha- haven't been able to do that. But you do what you have to do in life. Mm-hmm. And um, I still played outside baseball, you know, after graduation, uh, high school. I still played baseball and football in the uh, neighborhood and semi-professionally. And uh, I had a tryout with the Brooklyn Dodgers, but at the time they were paying such so little to go away to play in these Class D teams and leagues that uh, I, I had to stay with my father and I stayed with my father. So when the um, I, my friends were um, mostly boys in the neighborhood, except I had one special friend, uh, an Irish kid from, from New Jersey named Frank McAleer, who used to come and sleep over the weekend to play ball with us. And then he, used to, he stayed in my house. Through him, I met my first wife. Um, he had a girlfriend, and he introduced me to, to Florence. And we married very young. She was 18, I was 21. And we had a very glorious marriage. We had five children. One son, my oldest, Bruce, and then the four girls, Barbara, Gail, Irene, and Nancy. And uh, we lived uh, at first on Marine Avenue in an apartment house with our cousin Teddy and Violet in the same building. And then I had Bruce and Barbara, and then I moved to 69th Street to a two-family house with my in-laws, Gerdrin and Hawk and Halverson. And uh, we lived there until, I guess Nancy was maybe nine, nine years old or so. And then we bought a house on our own uh, a lovely one-family house on 77th Street and 10th Avenue. And we lived there very happily until Florence got sick and uh, she had uh, pancreatic cancer and in three months she passed on. It was a difficult time for, for the girls and I because uh, Nancy was still only 12 years old. and. Um, we managed. They babysat for me for two years. They, they wouldn't leave me alone. They made sure there was always somebody around taking care of me. I wasn't supposed to know it, but I, uh, that's what happened. And then, after two years, I met a uh, lovely woman, Gladys, at a Masonic affair. She was, she was divorced, and uh, we hit it off pretty good. And. Uh, in time we got married. And uh, Irene and Nancy uh, lived with us in the beginning. And Gail got married. And Barbara was married. And uh, Bruce had left, left the city. So we, we were married. And uh, we did. We, um, As the children got married and left, we finally were left just alone, the two of us. And um, we stayed until I retired. We stayed in, in, in her home on 80th Street. I sold the house on 10th Avenue. And we stayed there until I retired um, in the year 2000. The reason I retired was I had a, a knee replacement that nearly cost me my life, and I spent six weeks in the hospital. I decided that was enough enough work when I retired. And we bought a condo in Oakwood Village in, in Fort North Lauderdale, where my brother Frank had one, and a few other friends, and we've been living very happily here. We have since sold the house in Brooklyn, and we bought a home in Jersey in the adult community. Uh, just to keep our contacts with the north. And we are what they call snowbirds. We come down here 
eight months a year, and we stay in Jersey four months a year. Not bad life. The only thing we miss the children because some it's hard for them to come. But now, as their children are getting older, they they've been coming down, and so uh, it's been a very nice life. And uh, I've got lovely grandchildren. They've, they're all doing very well. My children have all done well. They're all uh, have good jobs and good income, and I'm very happy for all of them. And now my children, are, my grandchildren, are starting to graduate college and go into the, the business world, and I'm sure they'll do fine, better than we did. And so far, that's my life. <laughs> Well, let's get back to your childhood for a little bit, Go too. Ahead. Uh, what was that grammar school like? Um, grammar school, we went to PS 102, which was on 72nd Street and Ridge Boulevard. And we lived on 79th Street below Ridge Boulevard. And every day we walked to school. There was no buses then. And uh, at lunchtime, I would either walk home. And then when my mother started working with my father, then I used to buy a sandwich in the delicatessen, and for a quarter I got a sandwich and a soda, and that was my lunch. And we stayed in the, by the school lunchtime, and after school we went to the, the afternoon classes. And I graduated from uh, PS 102, and I uh, went to Fort Hamilton High School, which is uh, newly built in the area, and a beautiful high school. And I wasn't the best of students because I didn't like to study too much. But I got by, I passed. And um, that's about all. And then you know the rest of it. <laughs> what were you doing when you weren't studying? What's that? What were you doing when you weren't studying? Well, I used to play ball most of the time. I'd go down on a Saturday morning. The first thing I had to do when I woke up, I had to wash the kitchen floor in the bathroom floor, and then I was allowed to go out. I'd go down about 8.30 to the ball field on Shore Road. I'd bring two sandwiches, and I'd play two two games in the morning, and then another team would come, and they say, want to play with us? I would play with them. And another team would come, I would play with them, and I would eat my sandwiches, and I would go home about 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And then I used to bowl, and I used to play football in the football season. And uh, I enjoyed every minute of it. I loved my child. I had a great childhood. And uh, with my uh, son Bruce, when he was old enough, um, we were members of Bethany Lutheran Church. I used to coach his basketball team. And I coached it for, for probably till he finished high school. Also, he got involved in Little League, um, and he played Little League for a while, and I was active coaching them. My girls weren't too athletically inclined, except for maybe Irene. But I remember when um, I brought Gail down to the ball field, and Gail was a little big for her age, and when they saw her, they were very happy. They thought they got a, a big slugger, but she couldn't hit the ball as, as, because she had a little problem with her eyesight. She couldn't catch it, she couldn't hit it, so her career ended pretty fast. Barbara was not athletic. Uh, as a course in college, she needed one more credit or something. She took volleyball, and she said it was the toughest course she ever took. She almost got killed once as one of the girls spiked the ball, and Barbara was not agile enough to avoid it, and that um, ended her career. Uh, Nancy didn't play any sports. Irene became a swimmer, and she went to New York High School, and one day she came home and told me she was going to try out for the swimming team. I said, well, fine, you're a good swimmer. But she said, I'm trying out for the boys' team. I said, well, why don't you try out for the girls' team? She said, they don't have one. I said, well, what did the coach say? He said, well, he said, if you can swim in a certain time, you'll be on the team. 
The next day she came home joyfully, telling me that she made the team, she swam at a certain time, and she proceeded to race for the school. She did well against certain boys, but certain ones were much stronger, and, uh, but she, she held her own. And she also became a lifeguard for me at New Utrecht High School. And uh, she's to this day is a very good swimmer. Getting back to school for a bit, do you remember any of your teachers in particular? Well, there was one teacher in grammar school but uh, as soon as I walked into her class, it's, uh, my name was Floyd Cape. She said, are you Joseph Caton's brother? I said, yes. She said, well, sit in the last row, last seat. Because my brother Joseph and this teacher, Mrs. Ramsey, didn't get along too well. So that was one problem. But other than that, I never had too much problems in school. I, uh, I took... Um, an academic course, I graduated, I took Latin, I took all the, you know, the math and the chemistry, and, uh, but I, I wasn't a A1 scholar, but I passed, you know. You talked about uh, baseball before, you used to go out on Saturdays, did you like to do anything else? Oh yeah, I used to, we used to bowl, we used to play in the street tag and box ball. Basically, my youth was was all athletics. I, I never was interested in anything, anything else. What about later, like in high school? Later in high school, um, I did the normal things that kids do, but uh, I worked after school as a delivery boy for the local grocery store. Uh, and. Uh, I, I got two to two dollars a week for working every day after school and all day Saturday. Pedaling a bicycle all around Bay Ridge to deliver orders. And then I worked for the, the Syrian grocer. His name was, it was Haddad and his sister, I forget her name. And I used to drive this old rickety bike from from like 81st Street and 3rd Avenue all the way to the 90s on Shore Road to deliver an order and they would give me a two cents deposit bottle as a tip. So things were pretty tough when we were money with. Do you remember uh, any old girlfriends or anything like that? Yeah, I had a few girlfriends at school. Um, nothing really serious or anything. And uh, I led a normal childhood, nothing special. I was not uh, so handsome like my son, my grandson Eric, that the girls had to, he has to fight them off. <laughs> but I did all right. Yeah, I bet. Uh, how, how exactly did you uh, meet Grandma Florence? You said through your friend, but how did uh, that through happen? My friend, um, he had a date with this girl, and she said she wouldn't go out with him unless there was another couple with her. And she, 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 she had a girlfriend, and uh, so we met. It was really a blind date. And we started going out, and the other two stopped going out, and uh, we ended up going out until we got married. And um, my wife, being of Norwegian extraction, uh, it was like uh, a shock to the family because I don't think they knew what a Norwegian was. But in the same token, my father-in-law didn't know what a Syrian was. In fact, he told my, my wife to be at the time, Florence, that a Syrian is a cross between an Arab and a Jew. <laughs> so, uh, but we got along very well. They were very fair people. They were, they were very good to both of us and, and to the children. And we, we had a very happy marriage for 27 years. Um, getting back to jobs for a second, when uh, you said it was sort of tough, but uh, were there any jobs that you liked that you had? Well, um, after the quilting business closed, uh, I went into... Um, business for myself, 
uh, manufacturer's ladies' lingerie. I enjoyed it, but I happened to got in, get into it at the wrong time because that also went overseas. They started making the same garments we were making here at half the price. So after about eight years, I closed that business and went into building management. A friend of mine was, was in building management, and he got me a job managing uh, four buildings that belonged to Industry City at the time. So I managed these, this one million square feet of building, commercial buildings for about uh, 10 years until I retired. I enjoyed that, it was very nice. It was local in the area on 39th Street and 3rd, it's in 1st Avenue. And I, uh, it was very convenient to the house. And uh, I was my own boss, I ran the building took care of all the maintenance uh, people and the elevator operators that they were showed up for work and were there on time. Everything was, all the services were taken care of. And when the um, tenants had a complaint, I saw to it that it was taken care of. And I had a very nice career there. What was it like raising your five kids? Well, it was tough raising five kids because um, we, we were a little cramped. Uh, we had the four girls lived in one room. We had double bunk beds, and we used to call it F Troop. And um, they were cramped, but they seemed to enjoy it. They don't, didn't complain. And uh, we had a small kitchen, but it was very efficient because you could reach the refrigerator, the stove, uh, the sink right from the table. Nobody had to get up. But uh, I think we had a good childhood with them. The girls all got involved in the Triangle Girls and they uh, all became beloved queens and they uh, they acted like queens and were treated like queens. They had, uh, they had a good life. My son um, he went to Fort Hamilton's high school, the same as Barbara, and they, uh, he graduated, and then he went down south. He went to uh, work as an electrician after learning through my brother-in-law, George, how to be an electrician. He went down south and worked down there. And then um, Irene graduated New Utrecht High School, Gail graduated Fort Hamilton, and uh, Nancy graduated from uh, from St. Xavier's Catholic High School. She had a little problem because she was she was Lutheran, but uh, she managed. Yeah, how come you went to both the Catholic and Protestant church? Well, my father was Protestant, my mother was Catholic. And um, my brother Joe and Gloria were, were Catholics, and. My father was determined that I was going to be Protestant. So I went to both Protestant Sunday school and then Catholic church on Sunday. Not without my other parent knowing which one, you know, the other one that I was going to. And I would go to the Protestant church and they were very nice. They uh, had no problems with them. And uh, then I would go to Catholic church and they would pick on the Protestants and say that if I went to a Protestant church you would burn in hell and your soul would turn black and all things like that. So I said, well, that's not nice. They, and the other people don't say anything about the Catholic church. So then I went to religious instructions at the Lady of Angels Church. And the nuns were very mean to the uh, public school kids who were, who were trying to, you know, get their Catholic education after school. And finally I told one of the nuns, sister, I said, if you don't want me here, I don't want to be here either. So that ended my Catholic career. And I became Protestant when my wife, uh, Florence, who was very active in the Lutheran church, uh, we brought up the children Lutheran and I was Lutheran. When I married Gladys, she was of the Orthodox, Greek Orthodox faith, and she was uh, 
fairly devoted to her church, and I, not being really devoted to any church, became a Greek Orthodox. So I've uh, I've been in, in quite a few different churches and uh, religions. So uh, how's your spirituality now as an adult? As How does what? What's your spirituality like now? Well, I'm very tolerant of all religions. Um, I feel just because somebody is born a certain religion, that shouldn't be held against them or it shouldn't be uh, anything special. As long as they are good in their religion and obey whatever it is they're supposed to listen to, that's fine by me. I said, just because you're, you're born a, a certain religion doesn't mean you should have any extra privileges if you're, if you're not a good person. If you're a good person, you're entitled to go to whatever heaven there is or whatever hell there is if you're not a good person. So what would you say your personal beliefs are? You know? And are they in line with that? Uh, What's that? So is that your personal belief that it's not so much the religion, but it's the goodness in the person? Yes, that's what I think is more important than the religion, is the goodness of a person to their fellow man. And that they, uh, if you just go, go by the golden rule, I think, is this fine. You do unto others as you want done unto you. And uh, that's, a, that's a good thing to live by. So what's important to you in your life right now? Well, the importance to me, the main importance is my family. Um, my, both my brothers and my sister and, and my children and their children. Uh, we, um, that's, that's what we basically live for. To finish out your life and see your children grow up and your grandchildren to be successes to be good kids and uh, and they all seem to be doing very well and um, we have a reunion every few years and it's wonderful to see them all get together even though they don't see each other too often and they get along very well and they enjoy each other and it's uh, they're very close for being far away from each other and that's a lovely thing to happen what do you think about the meaning of life? The well, meaning of life, uh, I don't give that too much thought. I just figure I'll do whatever I can to help my family and stuff. And, uh, and, and, and just live out the rest of my life uh, enjoying it if I can. So uh, what would you want your grandkids, like what? me, to know? What do I want for my grandchildren? All I want is the, the respect to their parents and to their elders that uh, that's deserved, and to see that, that they grow up to be good, righteous citizens of this country, and to appreciate this country for all it's done for all of us. Because uh, what's going on in the world, uh, there's a lot of terrible places that you could have been brought up in. And you should always feel honored to be here in this country. Uh, some of you, uh, some of our grandchildren are, have differences and think that certain things are not right. Well, they're, they're entitled to that. But also you have to appreciate other people that they're entitled to their beliefs. And I always believe that way. As long as people don't try to force their beliefs on you, let them do as they wish. Mm -hmm. If uh, you could change anything about yourself, what would you change? Well, there's nothing really you can change at this stage of the game. I think if if I had a life to live over again, I would have fulfilled what I really wanted to do, and that was to be a professional athlete. I would have gone to college and, and, and gone that way. But... Um, that's over the dam. That's water over the dam. Uh, what was Grandma Florence like? Grandma Florence was a very fun-loving and outgoing person who 
enjoyed life and enjoyed her, her family and her children. They were her pride and joy. Her, especially her girls were her pride and joy. She uh, was a very good mother, a very good wife, very good daughter. And um, it's just a shame that she didn't see them fulfill all the things that they've done because she would have been very proud of all of them. And uh, she always wanted them all to be together and, and to, to take care of each other. If uh, you were president of the country, how would you change it? I was president of the country. Um, I'm sure there's something I would try to make easier, you know, like the uh, uh, certain things to the elderly, like the medication to me seems unfair, but the, the prices of medicines are so high. But um, on the whole, I can't complain. Uh, Life has been good to me. We've always had plenty of food to eat, as you can see. And um, I can't complain about life. Any major problems in the world that you'd like to change? Well, there's, there's uh, many problems that I would like to change, but you would have to be have the wisdom of Solomon to, to change them. I mean, this... Uh, the uh, Middle Eastern situation is terrible. It's just, there's no end to it, and uh, I can see no end in the near future. There's just, there's too much hatred and uh, religious fanaticism that is, is causing the majority of the problems there. And once you're such a fanatic with, with, with your religion or with anything else, you're blinded to anything that's right and wrong. And, uh, I don't know how they're going to get out of this situation. Uh, back to your family for a minute. What was your mom like? My mother was a sweetheart. My mother, uh, her name was Angel, which she was an angel. I mean, she was, uh, my father was tough to live with. He was uh, from the old school. And yet my mother tried to give us whatever she could and uh, to help us over the, the hurdles of, from the old school to the new school. And she was very, she wanted us to, you know, to, to be on our own and to do things. And she was a very good woman. She was always, uh, the drop of a hat, she would put a meal on the table unexpectedly. And every Sunday, my brothers and sister and I and our children used to go there for Sunday dinner. And uh, Tata used to always um, take care of us all, feed us well. My father would lay on the couch and my poor mother would be working all day, cooking and, uh, and serving. But that was, her, that was her life. She lived for us too. And uh, I think all the my grandchildren, although they didn't have her that long, always remember her. And uh, I hope they always do, because she was a wonderful woman. All right, were you close with your cousins? I was um, not close to my cousins, uh, except for my cousin Teddy, who lived with us. Teddy was more like my brother than my cousin. Uh, Teddy's family, Mother and father died in the influenza epidemic, I think in the, in the 20s, 1928 or something like that. And Teddy was an orphan. When he got out of the orphanage, my mother and father took him in to live with us. Unfortunately, he had three sisters that we couldn't take care of, and they stayed in the orphanage until they were old enough to go on their own. And um, the three of them, never married and um, one was sickly Evelyn she had the Parkinson's at a very early age the other one was Josephine who was an artist she painted beautifully and she went to Disney World in California and worked for them for many years and then my cousin Evelyn Eleanor 
who was my favorite, and I was her favorite, was a sweetheart. She was very good to us, whatever she could do. She lived in a furnished room and used to come to visit us all the time. And she was full of fun and hope, and eventually she went to live with her sister out in California until uh, she passed away. But my young cousins, um, I guess the closest ones we were to was, was to Audrey, who was the daughter of my uh, uncle Behij. She was more our age. The others were a lot younger, and so we weren't too close with them. Um, I think we've covered a lot of bases. What's your life like now? My life now? Well, my life is with one big uh, easy time. It's very nice. We're tired. Uh, I wish my wife's health was better, but uh, we live very well down here and we're very happy. My brother is here and a few other friends and we get along very well and we have great times. And then uh, on a final note, what would your uh, advice be to future generations? To the future generations, to stick together with your family as much as possible and learn from everybody and, and strive to do the best you can. Uh, even if it's a, a job that uh, is not thought highly of, if you do the best you can at it, you'll succeed and you'll make out all right. But uh, don't just settle for second, second best or for not a job well done. If you're going to do something, try to do it the best you can. That's the best advice I can give anybody. And to learn how to get along with people. Because I think that's one of the reasons I've had as much success that I've had is because I can get along with anybody. Um, people who most people can't get along with, I get along with and I can uh, tell them things that nobody else could tell them because I, I tell them in a nice way and I, uh, I understand their problems and uh, not everybody is the same. But you have, to, you have to respect everybody, whether they're above you, below you. I look up to nobody and I look down to nobody. And that's been my philosophy. Thanks a lot, Grandpa. Thank you. Do that again, Grandpa. <laughs> Say something. <laughs> That's my grandpa. Yeah.